guys. So this is nothing to do with tables. Nothing to, to do at all with tables. So, what I've done is I've cut... <laughs> I should have moved this over before I showed you guys. So I could actually show you what I've got here. Three pieces of very, very thin, probably about two, three mil thick ply. Three pieces of it. I'm going to stick them all together. And then I'm going to sand the edges because I'm a neat freak. Um, anyway, I'm, I uh, used the tape to get a flat edge that I made. Used that edge of the saw. The reason for that is I lost my level in the last move. Oh my goodness, yes I did. So I've lost my straight edge, but saws have a straight edge here. Also, they're basically their own square. Square being the ability to get a right angle. Or an angle off of a square. Like, you know, right angle. That bit, according to that bit, is a right angle. That's 45 degrees. So I was using this a little bit like a square, but I was just going dot to dot really. Making me own my own straight edge along the edge of a big panel. And I cut these out from that straight edge, measuring up everything I needed. But I want a handle. Because this is going to be a hawk for mortar. Because <laughs> I've plastered and I've mortared, but I don't like the idea of having, like, I don't know. I don't have a big uh, flat piece of wood that I will have nearby me. I'll have a bucket because I'll do the double bucket mixing method for my mortar because I know it's faster. I mix concrete that way and it's very fast. You don't need a mixer. You don't need a shovel to scoop up and mix your, mix your batch. Because I'm going to end up doing this wall. It's a retaining wall. We've thought about it. And I'm looking for more opinions still. We think there's a route from this tree. Pushing out here. Because it's, it's actually bulging out in the middle of the wall. Uh, causing this crack. So we think this wall. Well. It, it needs doing one way or the other. So we've come up with a few ideas. But either way. I'm going to need something to hold my mortar. While I work. So I'm going to make the most amazing hawk I have ever thought up so far, not that I've spent much time on it, but when I was in Hungary there was a hawk that was quite long and rectangular with a kind of curve handle like that, and I actually scooped my arm under it and held one and let the other one run along my forearm so the weight of the whole thing was across my forearm rather than just on my hand, that way the weight was more easily distributed and could, I could hold it throughout the day much, much better. So that's why I'm going for a long rectangular hawk in comparison to just a big square and along with that I was thinking hey I want a handle so I thought I'd have a handle the same angle this bit that I'm holding as what I had in Hungary but I want something to not run along my arm and not kind of bash into uh, the other part I might end up putting a guiding rod in so that I don't like easily like have it angled off my arm or something while I'm using it, or don't not use my body to nudge it off of my arm as I'm going, something to guide, but we'll see. So I've got this, this stick was angled already. The reason why I've taped all of this up is because this, trees don't normally grow out at right angles. So this was actually one piece, and I cut that that way so I could actually angle and put something back on. But it won't be this, I don't think. And then I cut that stick off, like that. But then I thought, okay, 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 what can I do with this? Because I'm not just going to have a flat bit that I can run along on that, you know? So what am I going to do? So I cut that at an angle, and I cut a bit of this at an angle, and I tried to fit that on there like that with glue, and I cut the top off so the whole top there is flat, so it will be flush against that, you know? With my wood glue. Weather adhesive. Uh, sorry, weather proof. Does it say proof? It does say proof. It's only resistant though. It does actually re uh, show up again as glue if you get it wet enough. But I guess that's not weather, that's drench. A little bit different. But yeah. So I'm making this handle. <laughs> Already it looks like it's going to be like a rifle handle or something. With a guard for the hand. And I'm actually going to wait until that... So I was going to put a screw through it. Hence the screws over there. And then use that to hold the glue so that it sets with the screw holding it tight, but the screw was actually getting it to go squiff. I wasn't able to get the screw to go straight down quite a thin bit of wood. 
So what I did is I just used electrical tape and the tension in the tape to hold it all together. I've done this before and it actually works really well. So already it's it's holding it. You know, the glue's not stuck already. This has just been on for like, what, a couple of minutes. Not even the five that this says it will start to adhere with. So this is already holding, you know. When that's set, I'll likely attach another bit there and attach that to the bottom of that one. And then that will be the handle. And that will be done. But I'm also thinking, hey, what if I want to put it down? I'll have a handle at the bottom, which will make it so that it will fall one way or the other. And what if I want to put it down so that I can use it like a big board that I would otherwise use to hold the mortar? Because I'd, I might not use the bucket toward the end, and my, I might want to put it down and grab something if something else is going on. You know, I might need to put it down in a hurry and have an extra hand. So I'm thinking, if the handle goes forward of middle, because then it can run along my forearm, like I like, I could actually put one leg straight there, one leg straight there, and one probably about here, to guide along my arm, my forearm. And if I cut them square at the top and the bottom at the same length and put them on there, I would actually have legs to stand the thing up on, three legs that would take the weight across the board. Oh, I've got to glue the three together and actually make it rigid first, but... If I did that, then I could sit it down on the ground, release, and then it would just be a board that stands up. Not a great big one, but most of the mortar would be in the buckets anyway. And that's what I'm making in preparation of doing the wall. Just a little thing is all. But I might have one of the most awesome hawks that anyone's ever had. A bit of a multitasking little hawk it will be. Natural wood plus a little bit of ply. Just spare resources I've got lying around. Good old bit of stick. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Just thought I'd show you something being made. Uh, I've also got um, these cut out. I said in the the video that was gonna, I think it's um, part three of making tables plus plus this for Adrian. So these triangles are gonna be shelving unit. They're gonna go into like a wall, an area in a wall like that in his house. And I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut in here, probably little rectangles, and allow um, two pieces to run along the inside of the shelves and actually be the supports and be the brackets so that the shelves go on the wall. So you'll have the hypotenuse of the square facing out from the wall and he's probably gonna, well he wants to put his pictures on it, family pictures and stuff. I'm thinking because it's not the biggest triangle he's gonna have to have a certain size frames, we've talked about that and it's gonna come over later today. But I might end up getting some natural wood, cutting it straight down in half, and having that kind of, uh, if it's thicker than this, go over the edge of the hypotenuse. So to run along here and just be a lip, so that if he does have a picture that leans against the wall because it's a triangle, because it's too tall or wants to lean too far back because of the back leg, it can also get caught by the lip and stay there anyway. So making it a little bit more functional and hiding the wood, the wood chip the OSB inside. So there's where that is. And that's what this is. And the reason why I'm doing a video that's not about the tables is because the standing table is basically it's it's done. And I've got a set I've got a <laughs> seller. I've got a buyer. So that's gonna be a little video. Selling the standing table. And uh until we get like the resin in, the, the quick set well not quick set, the hard really solid resin for the uh, inside of the coffee table well there's not much more to do on that so we're gonna have to wait for the legs to stain well and stuff and sand that and just kind of keep working on that so yeah i thought i'd show you some of this stuff i've got going on hope you enjoy it <laughs> see you next time bye